This is Access Door County, and I'm Arlene Wolfel, your host for today, and we have Carrie Cunahan, the Executive Director of the Door County Humane Society. So Carrie, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and how long you've been with the Humane Society? Sure. I came to the shelter in July 2005. Previously, I'd been working at a theater in Chicago and managing that and volunteering at a Humane Society. And as time went on, I realized that my passion and drive and interest really um, was more guided towards actually running an animal shelter. And this position opened up and I've been there ever since. It's been about eight years now. Well, we're very fortunate <laughs> to have you because Carrie has done a wonderful job at the Humane Thank Society you. with building relationships and growing our membership. Um, now, people tend to think of Door County Humane Society being part of the county, but that's not really, really the case, is it? That isn't, and that's interesting because sometimes people do call the shelter and, um, you know, mention that they're, oh, that we're a taxpayer, so therefore something, something, something should happen. And what they don't realize is we do have the name Door County Humane Society in our organizational name, and we do serve all of Door County, but we are actually a private nonprofit. So any money that does come to the shelter from any municipalities, from the county, from the city of Sturgeon Bay, for example, um, those are seen more as donations. Those are those municipalities choosing to help fund us, as opposed to us being under a contract with any of them. So we are a private nonprofit, and we're responsible for any decisions we make throughout the year, the financials, raising the money to keep ourselves going. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's an expensive venture. It is. <laughs> um, how did the shelter come about? Um, and back in the early 90s, um, and I wasn't living here at the time, so this is, of course, the stories that were told to me, um, mm -hmm. there was a city pound. Because what's interesting about the way different, the way that Door County operates the shelter differently than a lot of other places is that because of the size of the different municipalities, only the city of Sturgeon Bay is required to offer an actual facility to take stray animals to. The other municipalities are responsible in that they have to have someone designated to pick up the animals and they bring them to the shelter, but the city of Sturgeon Bay has to offer this sort of city pound. So, you know, back in the 80s, 90s, okay. I'm not sure when it opened, there was a city pound and that's where the animals were, were taken to. And in the early 90s, a group of um, interested animal welfare um, people were concerned about the way that pound was operating and wanted to actually begin a specific humane society to serve this purpose. And that's when the Humane Society was founded and that was in 1992, it was incorporated. And then the old facility, which we just recently remodeled, was built in 1999. And how did the new addition come about? Um, need, <laughs> <laughs> definite, definite need. Um, we, you know, when I, when I first started in 2005, we really focused, like you said, a lot on public relations and getting the Humane Society back out into the public, making sure that we were making a positive statement about who we are and the mission and the goals we were trying to accomplish. Um, a lot of um, meeting with the, the community, learning what they wanted from us. And we accomplished those goals within a few years. And then we started to focus more on the, the operations. How is it running? Where are we not able to serve the community? What parts of our mission are we not failing at but not accomplishing as greatly as we could? And a lot of that kept coming back to the building holding us back. It was holding us back as far as when the animals first arrived, the things we could and couldn't do with them. It's, it was holding us back as far as um, education and outreach and being able to get more people into the building um, in a way that really helped get the word out about us more. Mm -hmm. and. Um, Specifically, a lot of d just the way the building was designed um, wasn't accommodating people and animals and the staff and the volunteers as best it could. So we started exploring different options. Do we move? Do we stay there? We have a beautiful, you know, we sit on just over four acres of land. It's gorgeous. It's tucked away. So, you know, if you can imagine a humane society in a neighborhood, that probably mm -hmm. <laughs> wouldn't go over very well with the neighbors. Um, so we really like where we are located. Um, and even though it seems like we're south and maybe not able to reach as far north as we'd like where we are. If you think about that we're also serving Southern Door County, we are kind of right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And because most of the animals do co come from the city of Sturgeon Bay. So we decided to stay where we are and then we just explored the things we need, the heating and air conditioning, the intake. We came up with a list of ways we want to better ourselves. And then we worked with an architect to come up with a design 
Um, it all springboarded from an estate that was left to us by a wonderful woman. We never actually got to know her. We knew she was up here. Um, we knew a little bit about her after she passed away, but her family chose to give the shelter um, her portion of what was supposed to be designated to a humane society. And that allowed us to move forward and start to fundraise more and, and get to where we were to, felt, to feel comfortable breaking ground. And so we broke ground in October of 2012. So it was really because of this uh, family's estate mm -hmm. that allowed you to get started on this project, exactly. which was really needed. Very much needed. Well, let's talk a little bit about the animals now. How many sure. animals would you say you have at the shelter right now? Right now, um, it is beginning of March, which means we've survived a very, very harsh winter. And that is the time when you'll see our population drop a little bit. So right now, it won't last much longer, but we have right around 100 animals with us at the shelter. Um, we obviously, it's going to always be more cats than dogs, but you know, in, in August, September, those months, we'll see well over 200 animals at the shelter any given day. Oh my gosh. And that always surprises people, you know, that, that there's that much going on. And it's interesting too, because, you know, even though there's less dogs than there are cats, the dogs actually require more work. So, you know, maybe by volume, it looks like maybe more goes towards caring for the cats, but in reality, just by nature of those types of animals, the dogs actually require more from the staff on a day-to-day oh, -day basis. Yeah. Where do they come from? How do they uh, arrive at the shelter? They come, obviously, from all over Door County. We never turn away an animal. Um, you know, that's why we're here. And we don't ever want to make it feel like that the county or the community might need to go elsewhere. So we want to make sure we're always there. Our doors are open. We're serving them in a very positive manner. They come from a variety of places. Um, in the city of Sturgeon Bay, a lot of them come from the police department because they are responsible for pickup for the city. For the rest of Door County, it depends on the municipality. It's usually a constable. Some of them now contract with a dog catcher um, mm -hmm. that lives here in the county, and he provides a lot of those services for certain places. But a lot of it just comes from the public. So it would just be you walking down the street and there's a stray dog and then you pick it up and bring it into the shelter. So it's a combination of all those different things. I have brought in a few yeah. <laughs> and, and I've taken a few home That's with right. me. <laughs> well, how long do they stay at the shelter then once they arrive? The first eight days is what we call their intake period. And when you, you know, I know you've been into the new building and we're excited to make sure everybody That's gets beautiful. in there because, thank you, but the intake wing now we're very, very proud of because it does allow us to serve those new arrivals as best as we possibly could. Because when they arrive, that's when they're the most nervous. They're tense, there's medical situations that we need to be able to deal with. We need to get them in a quiet, calm spot. Um, they need to get all the medical care that we can give them right away. Um, and then they, they stay in the intake area for eight days. And then on the eighth day is when they officially become ours to move you know, into the next steps with. Mm -hmm. um, the nice thing is, and something we're very, very proud of, is that every animal that arrives at our doors um, and assuming there's not some sort of medical treatment where the animal is suffering so much so that the same as you might make that decision for one of your own pets to have mm -hmm. to put them down, unfortunately. We work with the vets to make those tough decisions. Um, and then if there's extreme aggression issues, you know, aggression to the point where we wouldn't feel safe allowing this animal back out into the community, those are the only reasons that we might have to make a difficult choice to euthanize. Otherwise, once they're at the shelter, they stay with us until we find them new homes. And there's some, you know, cats especially that have been with us two, three years. So they, they make, you know, they do as best they can at the shelter. Nothing would ever be as good as finding a permanent family, of course, but we become their family mm -hmm. until we find those people. Well, it must be cost a lot of money to take care of all these animals. It does. Um, what do you use from a financial ex perspective? Like, how much does it cost to run a shelter? Our annual operating budget in, before the new building was right around $400,000. Because we've just moved into the new facility at the end of last year, we don't exactly know how much the new building mm -hmm. is going to affect that. In some ways, it was designed to be more efficient, meaning that it's going to cost us less in salaries um, as far as efficiency to clean. We're able to bring in more volunteers to help with those sorts of things. 
um, heating the building and that sort of thing is going to be more expensive because it's more square footage now. So we're not 100% sure what the next, what this year's budget will be, but it's usually you know somewhere between 400 and 450 thousand dollars a year. And what do you rely on to for your income? How do you get an income? Is it memberships? Um... Very very generous people of Door County. <laughs> That's oh, okay. how we do it. Um, it's, <clears throat> we're, we're responsible for about 95% of our budget. 5% does come from the municipality donations that I mm -hmm. mentioned earlier. Um, but membership, like you said, membership, that's, that's sort of our base. That's where we sit. Um, those people are the ones that we turn to year after year. Um, but they also get a say in, in what the shelter does. They get to help vote on new board members. They're a part of major decisions we make. They approve the budget every year. Um, but those people, they're kind of our lifeblood. And they're the ones that come to all the events and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the membership. And then we have all sorts of different programs. We have the Sponsor Day program, and that's where someone will donate the, it's $250, and it's the difference between what it costs us to operate and what we bring in. Um, there's Humane Heroes, those are the people that we do monthly credit card donations. You know, and that's kind of easy to budget because we know it's gonna come in. Mm -hmm. We work really, really hard. We have an incredible group of volunteers and board of directors and marketing folks and fundraising people that are always planning events. And if you go to our website, which is dorianimals.com, um, you'll see just monthly just how much goes on in order to keep us going. And it's a lot of work, but that's really, you know, that's the only thing you can do. And then we rely on events where we send volunteers out into grocery stores and they'll do shopping days, which is helping us bring in the supplies we need. Mm -hmm. We're always looking for ways to cut costs, you know, on one side and then find ways to increase the revenue on the other. And then, you know, there, people always come in and they're asking, how much does it cost to buy an animal? Well, and, you know, we don't buy animals, we adopt them, but we do charge fees. There are adoption fees, there's fees for any of the services we provide through the shelter. Mm -hmm. And all of those are things that kind of keep the income, keep our doors open, keep us able to pay the bills. Um, part of the new building is we did add a retail space that we're very, very proud of. And in that space is our merchandise and anything pretty much you need in order to adopt an animal. So all the supplies you could imagine. So it's convenient for the adopters, but then it also helps us by continuing to bring in more revenue. Well, I think we are running short on time, so um, now we're going to go over to the new shelter so that um, everyone can see what that looks like and visit some of the animals that are looking for forever homes. Perfect. So thank you, Carrie, for spending this time today. Thank you for and, having us. Um, we'll look forward to your tour over at the shelter. Sounds great. <laughs>
365 days a year, caring for the over 800 animals that arrive to us each year. The Door County Humane Society is the only animal welfare organization serving all of Door County, from Southern Door to Washington Island. No stray dog or cat is ever turned away from our doors, and each one stays with us as long as it takes to find their new forever family. Interested in becoming a part of the Door County Humane Society family? There are many ways to get involved. Volunteering, donating, becoming a member, or helping us at one of our many events throughout the year. Thank you.